If ever there was a Crusader Kings 3 mod that felt designed specifically for me, the Fallen Eagle, the Dawn of the Dark Ages, would be that mod. The late 390s to mid 400s AD and the fall of the Roman Empire is hands down one of my favorite slices of history, so it's not surprising that my all-time favorite Total War game is Total War Attila and, well, now this overhaul mod in Crusader Kings 3. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and in today's overview video, we will take a rather extensive look at the progress that has been made so far in tandem with their latest release dealing with new mechanics and map updates, following my mod overview format of features, factions, and the future. You'll find the mod link in the description, and if at any time you are enjoying the video, be sure to give it a like, sub to the channel, while also turning on bell notifications. All three help so immensely in getting these videos seen by YouTube, and it's always greatly appreciated. Now, let's dive into the CK3 overhaul mod, The Fallen Eagle, The Dawn of the Dark Ages. Fallen Eagle is a total overhaul mod with its initial start date in 395 AD, immediately after the death of Roman Emperor Theodosius I, leaving his two sons in charge of a now divided empire with Honorius in the west and Arcadius in the east. This split in the Roman Empire could not have come at a more inconvenient time as change is on the winds. The Huns, while known to the Romans for nearly three decades at this point, are now more solidified under Uldin, pushing smaller Germanic tribes west across Roman borders in what would be known as the Migration Period and pressure both the Eastern and Western Roman Empires. In the West, plague and a bloated administrative system have placed a heavy financial strain on the government and its effectiveness to keep back barbarians and civil strife from within. To the Far East, the Sassanid Empire is gearing up for an offensive against the now weakened but still extremely wealthy Eastern Roman Empire. And after years of persecution and genocide by the Romans against his people, the Visigothic king Alaric leads a rebellion to liberate those that he loves. It's a very ripe time for intrigue, key alliances, conquest, and honestly survival, especially as the head of two of the largest empires in the mod. Beyond the actual setting, the mod team has done an absolutely fantastic job at overhauling CK3 to make this mod unique. Cities like Rome and Constantinople now show urban sprawl with ancient coastlines and rivers present on the map. The border user interface has been extensively remade, just recently switching to a black and gold setup that is very crisp and thematically fitting. A bolder color scheme on the map allows for easier distinctions among different kingdoms, making borders more distinct and easily readable, and several other pieces of UI such as the square titles, lifestyle backdrops, and other icons really set the mod apart for the base game, highlighting the time period and bringing the game into its own world. Lastly, I'll definitely give some kudos to the team for their integration of the Total War Attila font sprinkled throughout the bodies of water. It's a very nice touch. This mod impresses right from the start, and we haven't even really dug into the details, but let's go into that now with features. When it comes to features in this mod, the team has clearly wanted to stick to the historical side of things pretty closely, which is most largely evident in the cultures and religions present in the mod at this time, along with some pretty cool newer updates. Cultures in this mod are really interesting to look at as you see evidence of the Roman Empire fracturing and the results of what the migration period has already begun and a great sense of historical accuracy. Most of Western Europe, west of the Rhine and south of the Danube is a mix of Roman and local cultures. By this time period, most of the West had been under Roman rule for at least a century or more. But you'll also see pockets of very non-Roman cultures as well. The Noric and Raetians, while under the Roman Empire and considered citizens, were largely left alone simply because they were far too removed from the main administrative highways and were rather uncaring of the events within the empire and thus were just left alone. Eastern Romans were far more diverse as the empire allowed more liberties among the Greeks and their Eastern counterparts in an effort to reduce rebellious activity, which is evident by the diverse cultures within their own borders. You'll also note that the Visigoths are well established within the ERE already by the state, in which the West starts out at war with King Alaric as he migrates during his rebellion. And lastly to mention are the Eastern and Indian cultures. It's not often that we see the rest of the world get the love and attention during this period as the West, and yet here they are in their own historical detail, which is quite honestly a delight to see represented in this mod. 
religions play an almost equal amount of interest in Fallen Eagle as it was a very volatile time for religion across the two empires. Emperor Theodosius was instrumental in cementing the Nicene Christian faith as the state religion, and as such, Nicene has started to really take hold and prosper throughout his time as emperor, with him conveniently looking the other way when Nicene Christians tore down Hellenistic temples throughout the empire. However, Nicene Christians now have a new sect to face, the Arians. While similar in structure, the Arian sect is far enough removed to be taken seriously, creating a schism, and needs to be dealt with so the true faith can prosper. Then there's the Hellenistic roots of the old Roman Empire, which still remains very strong along with the Celtic religion, and combinations of the two are still present in large numbers, especially in the northern and more remote parts of Gallia, Germania, Hispania, and Britannia. The religious differences between the pagan and Christians are significant, and it's only the beginning of the conflict we see throughout Western Europe's history. The Atlas update is one of the biggest features released just before this current one, and it's very important to the evolution of the mod overall. In it, the team have added back most, if not all, of the vanilla map, especially the entirety of the East African continent, as historical records show the largely relevant kingdoms of Ghana and Tuareg were known by the Romans. Another significant change are territorial remappings throughout the entire map. Northern Europe has been expanded and is now dominated by the Huns and the Sabres, with several consolidated kingdoms present to the far, far east of Asia and into northern India. The last major atlas update involves the Sassanids, who no longer have direct control of roughly two-thirds of the Middle East and are now broken up to reflect, again, more historical accuracy. To wrap up the feature section, we have the new Migration Casas Belli. The new migration feature is a Casas Belli unlocked via an innovation, wherein you declare war under the premise that you want to pack it up and move to another area of the map, setting off an event chain where you can negotiate with the defender to get a better deal than what you had beforehand. On enforcing your demands, it splinters up your old realm and moves you to the targeted duchy title while converting a number of counties to your culture all depending, of course, on how large your old realm size was and how many counties had that same culture. There are a few event-specific migrations like this, including one to migrate to Britannia to escape the madness that the Huns have begun. I haven't triggered this myself, and the debug event auto-resolved things instantly, so I couldn't even cheat my way to it, but it sounds like a great start to a horde or migration mechanic that Paradox needs to figure out and get rolling if they ever want to address migrating factions throughout their game's histories. After that extensive dive into features, it's now time to take a look into some major factions of which there are several to point out. First and foremost, the Eastern and Western Roman Empires. Both are ruled by Theodosius' sons, as mentioned, and both are rather young and not very well equipped to handle the events at hand. In the West, you start as Honorius, a young 10-year-old emperor who can't really do anything effective for uh, six years in the game. You'll start at war with Alaric as the migration causes Belly into Pannonia, a war I have yet to win and will financially put you so far in debt you're unlikely to recover. I personally just let Alaric win. Sure, he takes a huge chunk of your empire as his own, but he does become your vassal in the process with over 10,000 troops at hand, so he's not someone you can easily fight against and it's just easier to forfeit. As Honorius and Emperor of the WRE, the most unique features of the faction are its decisions, which include things like unifying Italy again, creating various provinces in Hibernia and Caledonia to extend Roman rule to all of Britannia, or do the exact opposite and abandon Britannia to focus on the mainland, granting full independence to the entire island. Once you get your feet settled, the WRE is a blast to play with lots of events firing off and many levels of interest to play with. The ERE is in a decently better state, which aligns more historically as well. They have no qualms with Alaric, as his migration doesn't involve ERE territory. Emperor Arcadius is already old enough to have a wife, just barely so, and combined with his greater wealth, starts in a position far ahead of his brother. Your primary concern around the ERE is inevitable war with either the Huns or the Sassanids, both of which have much stronger armies, Although with your coffers as full as they are, it won't be too difficult to find some mercenaries to fight at your side. The ERE shares in most of the WRE's decisions, making them less unique than the Western counterpart. 
The only big difference is that the ERE is vastly closer, only needing to conquer Rome, to accomplishing the mend the Great Schism decision, one that unifies the Christian faith once and for all. The ERE is just as fun as the WRE, just in different ways. If you want a good challenge, taking on the Hunnic Empire is a great way to start, as they are invading every barbarian tribe north of the Danube, north of the Danube with 10,000 troops, 8,000 of which are Hunnic invaders, involving lots and lots of men-at-arms. It's up to you as King Olden who to conquer, and it's probably wise to settle some white peace terms in order to not get overwhelmed. As a tribal faction leader, you'll need to worry more about generating prestige rather than gold, although raiding with your armies is not a bad way to generate gold, which you can then turn into some much needed and historically heavily used local mercenaries. A rather obvious choice is of course the Sassanid Empire, which actually falls under the Fallen Eagles equivalent to the feudalistic government type known as Dynastic in the mod. With 45 plus vassals, you will have a fantastic time handling them while also pursuing your own interests, no doubt to the west, to take on the ERE. The Sassanids have a couple of unique decisions centered around promoting Zoroastrianism, such as restore the Mazdan Yasna High Priesthood, which is a fervent faith of Zoroastrianism. The last of the eastern factions is actually all the way in India, with an empire that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sassanids, the Gupta Empire. As mentioned earlier, the rest of the world didn't just stop during this interesting slice of Western European history, and here we have the largest kingdom in India. I love that we can play these types of cultures and empires during the periods where they are overshadowed, and the Gupta are a very interesting faction to try. Most importantly for recent updates is the other half to that Atlas update I mentioned, and that's the Pin Dragon update. This update added an entirely new section of factions to play as during the 395 AD conflict known as the Wrath of the Celts. The idea behind this update is to give the player three specific factions important to the islands of Britannia. As the Western Empire starts to crumble, will the Celts, previously shoved out of their homelands by the Romans, be able to finally reclaim what is theirs? Celtic factions received a pretty massive rework, along with some new decisions and casus bellies to help them reclaim those lost lands, among other things like Druid religion splits and new events to steer that narrative. It's great to see them focusing on the various minor but still important clashes like the vanilla game does. We're almost finished, I promise you, but it's time to look at the future to see what the mod team is hoping to accomplish down the road. First and foremost are different time periods leading up to CK3's 867 AD start date. These start dates include the 467 fall of Vienna and the sacking of Rome, the 532 AD reconquest of the West led by General Belisarius under Justinian I, the 632 Sword of Islam, the one I'm personally most excited for as we finally get a Rise of Islam time period, and lastly, the 768 Rise of Charlemagne, which should be incredibly interesting considering that Total War Attila's Age of Charlemagne DLC is also one of my favorite DLCs for Total War, the definition of what a Total War Saga title should be, so CK3 will soon have two of my favorite pieces of history present in this one Fallen Eagle mod. As for future mechanics or features, the only one I'm currently aware of is a trade node network system, which is technically present already but currently does nothing. Alongside something boosting a trade mechanic as I believe CK2 has, the team is looking at the possibility of adding various Casas Bellies centered around trade, which is pretty cool. There's not too much openly in development with regard to the future features, but I have no doubts that each starting period will have their own uniqueness to them, and I'm very much looking forward to finding out more. The last section of this mod review is my quick opinion on the mod in all, and if you haven't figured it out by now, I absolutely love this mod. The time and effort the team has put into graphic changes, altering map features, adding new mechanics that bring about some historically relevant events, and just the tie-in to some of the great historical accuracy all lead to this being one of the best mods for Crusader Kings 3. I know I am heavily biased to the time period, but it's not common for many games to start the player out with the ability to control a huge empire right from the start and try to keep it together. In Total War Attila, it's a manner of surviving the onslaught of problems thrown against you. In this CK3 mod, it's about utilizing the materials at hand, your vassals, pursuing unique decisions, and the balancing religious spread across your empire 
that set it above a vast majority of overhaul mods for this game. The future of this mod also has an immensely excited with their wide range of start dates that all lead up to the early 867 start date for Vanilla, and to see what the team is working on as they progress is just great. I cannot recommend this mod enough, and you should definitely go try it out now and expand out of your normal campaign box to play some lesser known factions that existed during this time period. And that will finally be all for my mod overview of Fallen Eagle The Dawn of the Dark Ages. I really hope you enjoyed this rather extensive look into a mod that has a ton going on in it. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and as always turn on the bell notifications. If you are interested in purchasing CK3, its expansion pass, or even want to check out Total War Attila, you can purchase any of those via my Nexus Game Store link where any purchases support this channel and are immensely appreciated. Be on the lookout for more mod overviews in the future, there are so many of them to cover. Also be sure to drop a comment in the comment section as well on which mod you'd like to see next. Thank you guys for watching, this is Havoc, and I will see you all in the next video.